Hey guys, welcome back. All right, I created another baseline and I'll be teaching you how to create it or recreate it. This time we're going to use analog, but before all of that, I'm going to play it to you. All right, listen to this. To create a new baseline, I'm of course starting the same way I've always started those videos. Create another MIDI track, just a new one, nothing on here. I'm just going to copy over a little pattern here and I'm not going to make that mistake again. Okay, it's in time, we've got a little pattern here, but what we're going to do is we're going to create the sound. For that, as I said, we're going to use analog. So I'm going to load it in here and we got... Sounds crap, it sounds utter and absolute crap. So what we're going to do, so we're going to move this first up, uh, oscillator, an octave down. And let's move this one up seven semitones. So we got that uh, perfect fifth going on. You see where we're going and let's detune it a little bit. So I'm just going to detune. You can hear this, just, just a little bit of phasing between those oscillators. Now let's bring down the filter frequency here. And let's bring down the sustain here so we can use it like it's supposed to be used. <laughs> okay, that sounds, yeah, I don't know. but. If we bring down this knob here and the sustain is just moving it halfway up again, it's, it doesn't make sense. So we're going to move this one down so we actually end up with the position this knob is um, saying we are. So after the decay has played, we're actually ending up cutting everything over 48 hertz um, out and not something half of that or something way up there. Okay, now next thing we got to do is probably um, pump up the envelope so we can hear something because now we can't really hear anything. So let's um, do that. And I'm using uh, my command key here and I'm pressing and holding it while I'm moving this here to move it in very small increments. Sounds quite good. Let's, let's, let's play around with the decay because we don't want any more high frequencies. And maybe bring up the resonance a little bit to emphasize the cutoff frequency. Sounds very similar to our end result. Let's change the drive here to an asymmetrical one. And all that does is basically separates the right and the left channel before driving the filter. And um, I don't think we're even driving the filter here, but um, still, there may be some um, stereo width going on there and being introduced. Um, now, we basically got our filter working and everything. So let's um, do, um, go to the envelope of the amp, uh, the amp envelope here and bring up the sustain a little bit. We do want this uh, emphasis on the first uh, few milliseconds of the note. So we're going to um, have a change between our attack and our sustain part here, but we're going to uh, bring it up a little bit because this is a little bit too much of a change. Yeah, you know, somewhere there, doesn't really matter. And let's uh, bring up the last magic part, unison. And what we're doing here um, in this unison part, you can uh, choose how many voices you want. And each of those voices uh, in the moment when you activate unison is being, uh, is playing or is acting as one instant of this analog here. And uh, by detuning them from each other, we're basically doing the same as we're doing by detuning those two oscillators. Um, 
So we create this little bit of phasing and a little bit of stereo effect because they are panned. Well, they are not panned. It's a mono signal, but um, they still we create a little bit of phasing and um, the waveforms um, move at a different rate. So uh, what's basically happening is um, it's not really um, how do you say it's not really this perfect um, um, saw wave here. Um, it's it's moving because one is um, a little bit shorter than the other one. So that's uh, creating this uh, phasing kind of sound because, well, it's the wrong word. It's not really phasing, but it's this detuned sound. And you can do it more extreme. But we want just a little bit. Okay. And that sounds, that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? So let's add up, uh, add in our trusty chorus effect here um, to give it a little bit more stereo width and um, make it a little bit warmer and uh, as I like to call it, uh, a little bit more hollow. here that sounds quite good let's bring up the feedback somewhere around there and you can hear the difference here without and with a little bit too much feedback nope uh, I just want and with it actually you know what let's change these two delays a little bit around here I'm going to bring it back up five sound quite good let's okay let's play around with this one But somewhere here. Yeah, right there. You don't want it to overpower the sound itself. Let's uh, saturate it a little bit. Actually, I don't want this clicky noise at the beginning, so let's bring this down a little bit. We're not going to use a compressor, but I'm going to EQ it a little bit. Going to remove the uh, low end here. Bring up a little bit of ping pong delay, create a little bit of space. Just, just a touch. And let's bring up the reverb. It was fast, wasn't it? All right, original. The one we did. I guess the difference here is a little bit more emphasis on the highs. And maybe bring up the... Uh, Envelope is a little bit higher on there. Let's bring in the 
up. And let's bring in the kick. I love the space line. I don't know why. It's just, it's awesome. And there we have it. All right, we're done with our bass line. Um, it's 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 a really really simple bass line, and um, you have to say though it's um, it's just it's um, one octave difference here, and we're using the perfect fifth, and it, it, this really gives it a lot, whole lot of drive. We're detuning it just a little bit to get some phasing, but uh, not too intrusive of effect. Just again, just a little bit uh, detune here. Um, using two voices, not for just minimal effects here, using our chorus to give it a little bit more of this um, wider, hollow feeling. Again, just just a little bit, not too much. We really want to keep it subtle. Um, where the real effect in the space line is coming from is the resonance and this filter here. So if we just uh, were to... It really is the filter and the resonance that's that's really making this sound so uh, char characteristically awesome. <laughs> is, is that even the description of the sound? Is it valid? I don't think so. But you know what I mean. Uh, so we got our perfect fifth here with a one th uh, octave separation for the root node. So we got that bassy kind of feeling and um, we don't want our fifth to be too high so it doesn't clash up with the sound because... That's what I mean by clash clashing up. If you have uh, your fifth too high, it gives this really awful sound. But if you have it just one octave um, above, it really sounds awesome. Then we have a little bit of resonance and all the awesome uh, low pass here. Um, and um, yeah, what do you want more? A little bit of chorus. We already had that in all our videos before on this playlist. And um, yeah, that's a really simple bass. And, um, shows you how powerful analog is. Analog really does some awesome bass lines. Uh, because in the next video, we're actually going to take a look at another bass line I created with analog, and I'm going to show you how to create it. And um, that's this one here. Well, I kind of screwed up. The kick is supposed to kick in there. <laughs> um. Those, those, um, those really nice kind of sounds here. Again, it's a, a perfect fifth um, that are being made, and you can see there's a difference in the octave again. Uh, those those really driving kind of sounds are really awesome to create with uh, Ableton's analog. I know you need the suit, I guess, to Ableton Live 9 su uh, suite to actually get analog, or you have to buy it separately. But it's a really powerful synth, and it's really, really simple. So it's easy to learn a subtractive uh, synthesis and um, with this uh, little plug-in here, and it's really powerful to create really awesome bass lines. Okay, now we got our UK um, garage kind of sound here. We're done. I gave a little bit of foreshadowing to the next bass line we're going to create. And um, I'm going to leave it with that. I wish you a really, really nice day. Goodbye. <laughs>